Hey guys, this is John over at Cheat Sheet Pros. Today we're going to do a four part tutorial over how to create your own fantasy sports optimizer in Excel using the solver function. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, this is John with CheatSheetPros.com and I'm going to do a tutorial on how to build a fantasy sports optimizer in Excel using the solver feature. So this is one that I had built. So before we had our web optimizer on the website, I was building these in Excel for each of the sports. Um, there are some limitations to it, but it's better than nothing and I had a lot of fun making it. So last night I was up pretty late watching the end of the football game and I opened this up and I was like, how in the world did I build this? So I spent about two and a half hours going through and relearning everything that I did to build it. And I'm going to do a tutorial on it that's probably going to be a two or three part series. So this is one I built for golf. So you can see it's got all of our data over here. We've got our calculating columns that we'll go over. Um, we have some of our admin stuff up here. And then on mine, I added the lineup spit out. And then also I made little buttons for optimize, reset, and save lineup. So I have a little button to click optimize. And it gives me the best lineup here. And then I can click reset and go back to zero. You can also lock players by typing L. So this should lock Tony Finau. And let's see if it still works. Yep, there's Tony Finau. And we're going to reset it. And then... Here to see who's it put in the optimal lineup here. Dustin Johnson. Okay, so let's exclude Dustin Johnson. I believe I did that with an X. So we're gonna hit optimize, and there it kicks him out. He's not in the lineup, and it to uh, totals our salary for us, our projection, average points per game, grade. I added a lot of extra stuff to this one. So, but we're gonna make one in Excel and you're gonna optimize a lineup today. And I'm gonna take you through step by step of all the issues and the problems and we're gonna get it done. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is my default that I'm gonna come back to. Um, I made this Excel sheet when I was working on the tutorial. So go ahead and open up Excel and we will get started. And I'm just gonna put this in a, another sheet so we're gonna call it Opto Tutorial. Okay, so we here we have a blank Excel and I wanna go over a couple of things with you, some basic statements that we're gonna use and it will help us speed up later on in the process. So the first one we're gonna use is an if statement. So anytime you're working with Excel, um, you have to use an equal sign and then it spits out a statement. So I'm just gonna say F1, I'm gonna put a number in here, 10. Now we're gonna put our if statement in G1. So column G, row one, this is G1. So we're gonna do equals. So anytime you put an equal sign in an Excel formula, or in Excel, that tells you that there's a formula coming. So we're gonna do if, so that gives us the if statement. And then you can see here it pops up, it says logical test, value if true, value if false. So we're basically gonna give it a parameter to meet, and then we do a comma, and then we're gonna tell it what to do if that is true, and then the next comma is gonna tell you what to do if that is false. So, for example, we're gonna say DEF, we're gonna say if F1 is greater than five, which it is, we put 10, and so we're gonna say if cell F1, holding the value 10, is greater than five, then comma, now you can see it bolds right there, value if true, so we're gonna say enter a one, and if it's false, we're gonna enter a zero, and then we're gonna close it off with a parenthesis. So that is our formula. So if F1 is greater than five, we're gonna enter a one. If it's not, we're gonna enter a zero. So we check it. Okay, F1 is greater than five, so it worked properly. And then we can flip that around and say, if F1 is less than five, and then that's how we double check it, it's a zero. And then you can even do this with a string. So we're gonna say if F1 is greater than seven. Now a string you wanna put in parentheses. So you can say, yes, it's bigger, and then comma, and then that's gonna be our false, no. And then we're gonna close it with a bracket. 
So what this is gonna do, if F1 is bigger than seven, it's gonna print out, yes, it's bigger. And if it's not, it's gonna print out no. So when we check it, yes, it's bigger. So that's a basic if statement. And then we have VLOOKUP, and I'm just gonna tell you what this one is real quick. So uh, VLOOKUP, if you're not familiar with Excel, is another formula on how you say, I'm gonna go find something in this cell, and I wanna look in this table, and when you find a match, return this column. So for example, if we have, let's say, a name over in A1, we'd say we're gonna VLOOKUP A1, and then you tell it, you see the table array, so that might be A1 through C99. So see our table lights up, so that's telling you where to look. And then there's three columns, A, B, and C. One is column A, two is column B, three is column C. And it'll, then when you do get a match, you wanna return column two. So that's gonna tell us to return the item in B and then you have true and false. So I've wrote thousands of Excel uh, VBA codes. I always use false because I want an exact match. So just get used to doing comma false. So when we do VLOOKUP, it's where the item is that we're going to look up, the table we're gonna look for it in, and then when we find a match, the column we wanna return, and then false because we want an exact match. And then, of course, this isn't gonna give us anything, but I wanted to give you the rough idea of the basic statement that we are going to use. Um, and then I'm gonna assume you're familiar with uh, sum statements. So let's go ahead and get started. So in these first three columns over here, we're gonna type player. So we want our player name, we want our salary, and our projection. These are the three things that we have to have in order to calculate it. So I like to make mine colorful, as you know. And so we're gonna go here, and I'm just gonna center these real quick. You don't have to. So we have columns A, B, and C. We have player name, salary, and projection. Now we're gonna need, let me scroll back here real quick. Okay, so now we need these five columns, and I'm just gonna copy and paste them instead of type it, typing them out here, but I'll give you guys some time if you're playing along at home. Okay, so column D, you're gonna type picker. So this is the picker column. So this is where solver is going to look to change this from a one to a zero if it's gonna enter it in the formula. And then we have our lock column. This is where we're gonna put whatever parameter we decide if we wanna lock a player or exclude a player. I like to use an L for lock and an X for exclude just because it's easy to remember. And then we have our uh, lock yes, lock no column. And this is basically for calculating. And then our G column, I can't remember what it stands for, but it's kind of a summary so we can look back up and then spit it out in an even lineup. And if you get into some more advanced stuff, you can even take these, turn them black, and shrink them down to where you can't see them. So it makes it a little bit easier to look at, but I'm gonna leave them up here so you know that they're there and then you understand what we're doing with them. So with this column, um, we're gonna leave it alone right now. And so we got our lock, yes, no, and we're good there. And once we get the cosmetic stuff done, we're gonna make some changes in Excel to make sure this works for you before we start entering our formulas. I forgot I was gonna do that in the beginning. And then over here, we're gonna do score, salary, and players. So since I've already done these, I'm just gonna copy this over here. And so you probably know this, but if you don't, so if you highlight two columns and you click this merge in center, it's gonna make that one. And then if you click it again, it will undo it. So this is over here. I just highlighted those two columns. I click merge in center for score. And then I did player or salary, players. So score, salary, players. So go ahead and do that. If you wanna give them a neat little background color, you can. Um, it's easier for me to look at if I know what color is what. And then while you're doing this, the salary we're gonna put in is 50,000. So for DraftKings, the max is 50,000. On FanDuel, I believe it's 60,000. 
our players, this is how many players we're going to put in the lineup, is six. Now we're going to come over here and I'm going to put three columns over here and I'm going to make these yellow because these are going to uh, change. So L, this is going to be where we get our score. That's going to kick us out however many points we need. And then we've got our salary here that it's going to total up and our players it's going to total up. So our score doesn't need to be next to anything, so we made that two. Then our salary and our players, those are the two main parameters that we're going to need. And then what do we got over here? I think I'm going to stop with that and we'll work on this optimal lineup over here in a minute. Okay, so now for the settings in Excel. So this is important. This is where you're going to run into a lot of issues. So you want to come up here to File. So go ahead and click File. We're going to come down here to Options. And it's going to pull up this box and we want the Customize Ribbon. So click that. And there should be a box here that's not checked called Developer. So this is going to open up the Developer tab on Excel. It defaults to not being checked, so the average person doesn't get in there and tinker with everything, but we want to check that box. And also, I don't know if this is default check, but you want add-ins also checked. So check those, click OK, and then I'm going to go back and check one more thing. OK, so yeah, go back up there to File, Options, and then we did Customize Ribbon last time, so we're going to go down to Add-ins, and you want to make sure that the Solver Add-in is up here. And then down here where it says Manage Excel Add-ins, click Go, and it will bring up this little box, and this is what you want checked, this Solver Add-in. So Solver has to be activated within Excel. So the biggest question I got when I started sharing my optimizers was it's not working, I hit a button, I get an error. So you had to go back in and activate Solver. And then I don't know if uh, this one needs to be turned on. I went ahead and turned them both on to make sure it worked and everything works for me. So that's gonna be our next step. And then we're gonna go here to, now you should have this developer tab right up here. We're gonna click the developer and then you're gonna go to, let me see, add-ins. Okay, that's another way to get it. Make sure this solver add-in is checked, and then we're good. And I'm just looking at some notes real quick, making sure I've got everything. So that should be, let me see our VBA. Okay, so now we're set up. We have Excel ready to go. We have our general cosmetic look. Um, before we go ahead and stop part one, let's go ahead and get this optimal lineup set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste mine. So go ahead and start working on yours. And I wanna keep these in the same column. So in, copy, paste. And then uh, let's just do, do, do. Yes, we wanna replace it. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some time to go ahead and get caught up here. So I'm going row one, row two, column N to Q. And again, so this is what it normally looks like. So just highlight four columns, two rows, and click Merge in Center. And then you can hit these little center buttons if you wanna put your optimal lineup up there where it's nice and pretty. And then on the third row, you wanna do number, or you can put anything in there, it doesn't matter, player name, salary, and projection, and you can space your columns out, so go ahead and do that. And then you just wanna do one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna have six golfers in our lineup, and then these are gonna be names, salaries, projections, and then we are going to sum the salary to make sure it's less than 50,000, and these I'm gonna go ahead and just clear them out so I can go through them with you. And so this is the first part of our tutorial. So this gives you the setup in Excel. We turned on the developer tab, we added in solver, and we got the cosmetic portion set up. So once your sheet looks like this, we're done with step one. 
So in this second video, we're gonna go ahead and get started with some of the basic coding. So go ahead and uh, click the next video and this will end part one, guys.